Hey guys, welcome back. Steve here from Tech Support with another video for you. Uh, we ran out of talent today, so they called in me on standby, and I'm now gonna do a little video for you. My apologies, I know you'd rather watch somebody better, but this is what you get today. So what we're talking about is our AV over IP system. It's a new product we're coming out with that we're very excited about. We already did a, a first video on that with Joel. He kind of goes over, talks about what the features of it are, where it's a great fit, all the kind of primer things you need to know about it. Uh, if you want to check that out, we'll put a link right up here for you. Check that out, then come on back and we'll tell you how to set it up. So uh, the first piece that we're going to talk about is the transceiver itself, the BGVOPMT. <laughs> Did that work? Wow. I've been trying that one for a while. It's never worked yet, but uh, I, I think we might have just pulled it off. So anyway, this guy here, uh, what's cool about this, one of the cool things about this, I should say, there's a, a lot of them, uh, the transceiver functionality of it. Basically with this little switch right here, I can turn this guy from a transmitter into a receiver, uh, makes it real easy for setup. Just pick one up, plug it in, and flip the switch for what you need it to do. Uh, it's got an ethernet port right here. These things are PoE ready, so you just plug that into a PoE enabled switch, and it'll provide power and uh, network connection to it, so that's pretty cool. Makes it easy for setup and installation. Uh, another thing to pay attention to are these dip switches here. These are gonna come in a little bit later in the video when we do the actual setup of it, but these basically are what we use to set the addresses of our units. So make sure you pay attention to that part of the video, because if you don't, it ain't gonna work. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the, the basics you wanna know about this guy before setup. Uh, the other critical piece that we're gonna be working with is the controller itself. So I'll go ahead and uh, switch that out right now. Oh, almost didn't catch that one. Anyway, here it is. Uh, this guy, there's not much to the, the setup and installation of this guy. Basically you plug in power, plug in your network right here. And on the side, we've got an HDMI output. This guy comes set to DHCP by default. So uh, it's just gonna grab a random address on your network. If you plug this guy into a monitor, it's got a little diagnostic screen that comes up with some information and it'll let you know what IP address it's on. That way you can find it, connect to it. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start setting this thing up. So uh, now we are going to get into the software setup side of things in all the configurations and all that good stuff. Uh, the first thing we need to make sure that we've done is taken our transmitter units and assign them all their own individual ID number. There's a chart in the manual that comes with each one of these in the box that uh, decodes the switches for you. Uh, again, you need to make sure that every transmitter has its own unique address. The uh, receivers you can leave uh, all up, which is address zero, which means auto, and that lets the software or the app uh, determine their grouping with which transmitter. So only need to make sure the transmitters are set, but make sure that each one has its own address. If you've only got one or two, you can just flip a little random address in there and it doesn't matter. Uh, if you got uh, a certain number of them, more than uh, you know four or five, it's easier to keep track if you just number them one through five, etc. So anyway, uh, we've done that with ours. Everything's all connected here. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my controller box now. Uh, I'm gonna punch in the IP address of that here. If you don't have the IP already, you can uh, connect an HDMI to the HDMI out of your control box. On the monitor, it'll display the IP address that it's been assigned by your local network. Uh, one important thing to remember when you're doing this is that you need to add colon 8080 to the end of whatever address that you have for your control box because that's the port that we're connecting to. Uh, without that, it's not gonna connect. So uh, once you connect to that, it's gonna ask you to log in. The login credentials are admin, admin, all lowercase for both. You could change those once you're inside the software here. So you'll notice once I get in here, the first page that it takes me to is this mapping screen. Uh, it groups it by receivers and transmitters, uh, but other than that, it really doesn't give us much information because we haven't named anything yet. So they've all kind of got this MAC address based name here. The easiest way to ID all your different devices in your system is basically with this little on off switch right here. What that does is that kills the video stream on the output of your receiver. So by turning off, I can see which TV turns off. So in my case, that was TV three. So I'm gonna turn that back on, verify that the video stream comes back, which it did. And so now I'm going to name that TV three. And so I'm gonna do this for all displays in my system. 
Uh, this, there's, you know, if you want to just go blindly in the dark, by all means, have fun. But uh, the quicker, more efficient way is to do it by toggling on and off the video stream. Uh, so this one's going to be TV2. And I'll try it on this guy. That looks like number four. And process of elimination tells me that this last guy is going to be TV1. So I'm going to go ahead and name that. So now I've got all my receivers labeled. So now when I'm working with them, uh, I know what I'm dealing with. Also, by labeling these, these names are what's going to populate in the app later on when we go to control this. So that's how you ID everything. Uh, for these, I know based off of these pictures, this looks like a little Red Dead Redemption right here. So this is going to be my Xbox. And uh, that leaves this one as my Blu-ray player. So just like that, I've got all the devices in my system labeled, and uh, now I can go on to the actual setup screen. This stuff can all be done in the setup screen, but again, with this uh, you know, turn the video stream on off feature right here, it makes it way faster for me to ID all these guys. There is a feature where you can make a little LED light on it blink. So if you're not yet connected to a display, you can do that from the setup screen as well, but this is the easiest way. So once we're labeled, We'll jump on over to setup, and you'll notice here I've got an auto-populated list of all my devices. Uh, the control box, without any input from you, will just automatically scan the network, and any of these devices that it sees, it will populate on the list here. Uh, one important thing to note is that the control box assigns the IP addresses for this system. These guys do not receive their own IP address on your network. You cannot connect to them individually. You can only connect to the control box. So uh, that's why this is all done through the web browser here because this control box assigns all the IPs and everything. So once we're here now, uh, we can see on the left uh, our group number and basically they're all on the same group right now because they're all assigned to the same thing. Um, the one difference being this transmitter for the blue right here. So notice that's the one I've got my dip switch set for. It's group 100. Uh, all the others are on 1000, which is what I have the Xbox transmitter set to. So that means these guys are all mapped to group 1000, so they're all going to be displaying the Xbox transmitter. So this is an easy way to see what's connected to what as well. Uh, for each one of these devices, we'll start with a transmitter here. Let's start with the Blu-ray. We'll go over here to the pencil and select Edit. Uh, this gives us a little bit of information about this device, tells us the uptime of it, uh, tells us the group number, gives us a MAC address, uh, version for the software, all that good stuff. Uh, as we get down here, here's where you can edit the name if you haven't already done so. Here's the group ID. If you have everything set to automatic, you can manually set your own addresses in here. I don't know why you would ever bother. It's for a very, very large scale deployment. So for most of you, uh, just do the, the dip switch for your transmitters and then let the software do the rest of the work for you. Make it easy. Save yourself some hassle. Uh, a little bit lower, we've got our AV settings. So again, I can turn the, the streaming video on or off. Uh, I can activate or deactivate the HDMI loop out on the transmitters. And then I've also got a speed setting here. What this does is uh, if we've got a very large scale deployment of these things and they start sucking up bandwidth, we're uh, letting them know what speed we've got to work with and it'll kind of put some compression on things. and. Uh, make sure that we can stack more of them on the network without bogging it down. Uh, finally here, uh, our RS-232 setting. If you're using RS-232 and you're sending it through the, the port right here, that just lets you set the baud rate that you want it to transmit at, and that's going to be based on whatever devices you hook up. Uh, again, here's that blink LED feature. So right over here, we've got a couple LED lights. So if you're trying to ID devices, you can select that it'll start blinking and then that way you can know which device you're working with and you can name it appropriately if you didn't do so through the mapping screen. That's pretty much all there is for the transmitter setup. So we'll just back out of here. Uh, we are going to go to a receiver now. Let's go to TV3. And again, we've got this kind of info up here. Gives you some uh, basic diagnostic information of it. Here we've got our name. We've got our group ID. Notice I can't select the group ID. That's because this unit is set to auto and it's already grouped to a transmitter. So it's got its ID now. 
uh, if you hard coded the ID number as well, if you were just setting it up as an extender, just a point to point video signal with no video switching, uh, this would also be grayed out because you would have already physically set the ID on the device. So uh, here we've got our streaming video on or off. Uh, we have a video scaling option here. So let's say I've got some 4K sources but a 1080p display. I can uh, set an output resolution that's compatible with my display and still have it run just fine with everything. We're going to leave that pass through because we've got all 4K stuff here because we're cool like that. Uh, anyway, again, our RS-232 settings, so you're going to want to make sure this matches the setting on your transmitter, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, beyond that, we've got a factory default. We've got another one of those blink LED lights here. We also have a reboot option, so if something locks up on you and you're not getting video, if you're having some HDCP issues, a lot of times just triggering a reboot on this guy will bring it back online. Uh, the rest of these are kind of, the, they're all the same thing. It's just all my different devices, so no need to go through each individual one. Over here, we've got the trash can. So you can always, uh, if somehow all your settings are wrong and you mislabeled everything, you can always just delete these things, give it a few seconds, and it's going to repopulate. But by doing so, you're then going to have to go through the process of identifying and naming your devices all over again. So try not to do that. Uh, password here, we can change the password to log in to the device through the web browser. So we're gonna navigate here to system configurations. Under this tab, we've got uh, our time zone set. Uh, under network, we've got our network settings. So if we wanna give this guy a uh, static IP address so we can always find it, we can do so right here. Uh, last is the UI setting, and we can choose between drag and drop mode and table mode. Uh, difference is the drag and drop mode is that visual graphics here that we were looking at when we first started up. So as I drag this guy across to a TV, that changes the, the assignment right there, and that switches my video signal for me. Pretty, pretty easy to use, but it can get a bit cluttered if you've got a large-scale deployment of these things. So if you are working with a lot, you're probably better off using the table mode under UI settings. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Now when I navigate back over to mapping, notice these are all just kind of in a little grid array, and right here I've got a pull-down menu for each receiver where I can select the source for it. So I just select Blu-ray or Xbox right there. Switch happens. A uh, lot less to look at when you're cruising through a whole bunch of these guys. Uh, definitely on the smaller scale, I prefer the drag and drop. That just looks a little more fun. And what are we doing if we're not having fun, right? <laughs> the stand guy's hiding back there. You might not be able to see him, but he's there. He's having his fun. Let me tell you. So right here we've got our firmware update. Uh, if you get an update for this from us for whatever reason, you just download the zip file, put it right in here. It's all automatic, pretty easy. Uh, other than that, that's everything there is to know about the setup screen. On our history tab here, we have a list of things that happened in the system. So if you added or deleted devices, if you had crashes, anything like that, you can find that in there really helpful for uh, diagnostics if you're experiencing some, some issues. Um, we've got options for video wall here, which we will go to in another video, but here you can basically create up to a 16 by 16 uh, video wall display using these guys. So that's really cool. Uh, that's a whole other ball of wax, so we're not gonna get into that setup in this video, but that is uh, coming very soon for you. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got our events. These are, uh, a little bit more in the real-time alert category is I guess how you describe these so I can set things up where if one of my devices falls off the networks I can shoot my administrator an email so that way they can be on top of uh, troubleshooting things or if you lose video signal for any reason you can set it to shoot someone an email and that's all configured through here it's all pretty basic pretty easy to do uh, so we won't spend too much time with that. That'll be again in our uh, advanced settings. This is more just a down and dirty, get this thing up and running and start watching some videos with it. Uh, here we've got our OSD section. So here, uh, this lets you superimpose graphics or text over the top of your display. So this is very useful for things like retail or something like that, where you want to have a little message going across, or like me, you just want to put a big happy face over the TV, then that's how you do that. Uh, we'll also get into that in uh, more detail in our advanced settings video. Beyond that, that's pretty much everything there is to this system as far as setup and configuration.
if you're just setting it up for video matrix switching or extenders, they're very easy to set up. Plug them right in. You can be up and running in less than an hour, uh, especially if you watch this video because I do a really good job of explaining things. So that pretty much covers everything you need to know about the initial setup and configuration. We will get into the more uh, advanced settings in a future video that's soon to come, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, stay safe out there, enjoy yourselves, check out some of the other videos on our channel, uh, keep an eye out for our exciting new products that we have coming out. And uh, as always, give us a like, give us a subscribe, it really helps us out, helps spread the gospel, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks.